video walkthrough on Majestic. Start in the back. You do have a receiver for towing, so you can tow some things. Uh, you do have a uh, gross mass gross trailer weight of 2,500 pounds, though. So you can't be towing large things like a boat behind you, but if you tow your own vehicle, it's perfect for that. Oop. Come back and up in here. Plenty of storage. Black one over there is a table, I believe. And access to spare tire and then little compartments underneath there. And it's nice that it all lays flat so you can put larger items in there. Access to that same storage. Right here is your city water connection. That's where you will go to hook up your hose if you're going to run everything off the city water pressure. You won't need to use your pump in that case. The one next to that is your fresh water fill. So this is where you're going to rest your hose in there, turn it on, start filling it up. That's when you'll need your pump. Now, definitely don't recommend um, waiting until you hear water gush out everywhere to tell it's full. Definitely look when you're filling it, check the monitoring panel on the inside. And when it reads full, then you come out here and turn it off. Just so you don't risk something coming loose in there and then getting water everywhere. Storage. Right here, that's obviously where you will fill your, your gas tank up. Regular unleaded fuel. Access to your shore cord. So it does come unplugged from there. You might as well just leave it plugged in there and just wrap it up here when you're done. When you want to use power from your generator, you have to take the end of your shore cord and plug it into that. Otherwise, um, the generator won't, it could be running and all that, but the power won't get to your camper. Water heater, very simple to use. The only thing you'll have to do is get it. Put your drain plug in. 15 16 is the socket size for that. I recommend using a little short socket and an extension with a ratcheting wrench. That goes in here. Just get it finger tighted to start and then snug it down with your wrench. What's the same? As soon as you turn on water, whether it be from your pump or from your fresh uh, city water, it's going to automatically fill up. Once it's full, you can then kick it on. Definitely recommend draining it after every trip because you don't want it sitting full of water, getting all stagnant. So before you pull your plug out to drain it, you want to relieve your pressure right here. Hold open, water will squirt out, that's fine, stuff out here is designed to get wet. Once it stops squirting out, snap that closed, then you can take your drain plug out. If you neglect to do this first, you're going to get a bath. And then just keep it clean, make sure it's clean in here and in there and whatnot, of any spider webs and debris. Over here, access to your dump area. So, previous owners left their hose, which is nice. You won't have to purchase one. This large one is your black tank panel. The smaller one is your gray tank. I definitely recommend doing your black tank first, letting that get all the way dumped, and then doing your gray tank second. That'll flush the hose out. These are your low point drains. These are the lowest point of the water lines so if you're trying to winterize you can open these up to blow to let the water out and then you have this valve here for winterizing to blow the lines out if you want to winterize exhaust for your furnace just keep it clean if you see any debris in there clean it out of there they do make screens for these put the screens on keep them from letting insects and from building nests and road debris from getting in there more storage back in there access to your generator here so you can do any maintenance and whatnot from out here coming around to over here awning is very simple to use just kind of difficult to demonstrate how to do it by myself which, so I'll kind of talk you through it hopefully that's enough so you can see that little strap there it's got like a, like a loop in it 
there's an awning rod, you'll get, first thing you'll do is you'll flip that little gray thing right there in the opposite direction. That's what's going to unlock it. Then, you know, grab your hook, hook that under there, and then pull it out. As you're pulling it out, it's going to open the awning. You hook, click, 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 click. Open it until you see the, there's a flap. Open it until you see that flap. Then you're all the way open. Then you can grab this, pull these out, lift up. At this point, they'll be more like laying, this, this piece will be more like that. Grab it, lift it, pull it up. What you're doing is going to raise it up because the tube, when it's open, will be like right about here. So then you're raising it up. And you do the same thing on the other side. Raise it up. And there's another piece, it'll be this piece right here. You want to make sure this is loose. That piece will be, as it's raised up, it's still going to be sitting like this. So then you want to raise that piece up. So it'll create, basically, like a triangle. So when, just the reverse to close it. Now when you close it, hook your loop thing into the loop. Hold it with one hand, and then with your other hand, flip that the other way. Definitely want to be holding on to it when you flip that, because if you flip that and you're not hooked onto the loop, the awning is just going to wham itself closed. You're going to break something, because all that tension wants to roll it in, it'll slam closed. You could break an arm, you could bend the tube, you can smash the side of the camper up. So make sure you're hooked onto that when you close it. Storage here, hoses from previous owners. Right here, access to your propane. So all the way to the left is on, all the way to the right is off. We're gonna close this now. And then we fill onboard propane. A lot of other places will fill onboard propane. We're gonna kind of back to where we started. But then this is that access to that apartment. There is a cargo lamp light here that is on a timer. So after uh, 20 minutes, they'll shut itself off in case you forgot to turn these off. Or you can turn them off yourself. There you go. All right, now we'll go into the inside. I'm going to turn your AC air conditioning off so you guys can hear me. So that's off. We'll go to that in a little bit. We'll talk about the cab up here front. So, it's like a, any Ford, uh, any Ford box van. This is very similar to that. So, dashboard. These are your lights right here. So your headlights, you see. There's no daytime running lights or anything like that. Right here, you have your emergency start. So if the battery underneath the hood, which is your chassis battery, if that were to start to die, um, you can hit the switch. Now, it's gonna pull battery power from your house batteries, which is the batteries for the camper, and use that to start your engine, just in case the chassis battery were to die. You have your cruise controls here, very easy to use. Climate controls, very easy to use. Just like a Ford, any 2010, 2012 era Ford uh, box van. Radio, simple. Presets, push and hold, CD, AM, FM, auxiliary. So you have an auxiliary port. I believe that's it right there. Um, phone. This one doesn't, doesn't have a phone or anything like that. Just again, I use the same. Excuse me. Same radio through all the Ford box fans, so some of them are all set up a little bit differently. But it's very simple to use. Turn this on and off. You got volume. Go through your menu. You can change your auto set, station on, audio settings and whatnot. And preset, push over to say preset. You can change the clock or whatnot. Seek your channels whatnot. Very easy. That's pretty much it for up here. Usually they're uh, pretty basic. That makes it nice, easy to drive, less distractions when uh, driving. 
because you are a little bit longer than a normal vehicle so and if you guys are folks are worried about driving i wouldn't be um the more you do it the easier it gets you just have to keep in mind you're longer and you need to make wider turns this is that awning handle i was talking about you'll use this to grab onto that loop you also use this end to flip the switch when it's closed so you can reach it because obviously it's pretty high up this bed here turns into a couch lift up storage underneath pull out towards you now it's a couch or this couch turns into a bed so now this is a bed lift it up push back right there there's also access to seat belts underneath there so if you are seated in this traveling you need to be you need to be buckled up down at here again turns into a bed lift up pop the legs off set them aside table will rest on this little shelf here on each side then you just reorganize your cushions the back ones to lay on the table creates this flat, flat spot to sleep on probably enough for one smaller adult or two small children then you have your breaker box in here all your breakers for your 120 volt appliances and then all your fuses for your 12 volt so you have all 15s and then 240 amp fuses for your 12 volt fuses i recommend carrying some spare fuses with you just in case you never want to be caught without the few without a fuse one of them if you pump and whatnot so just carry some spares do have a spot to be seated up here as well this one has a 500 pound capacity up on this top area and then if you want headroom when driving you can take this cushion and move it set it aside so you have a little bit more headroom in this area Microwave works like your standard household microwave, unless you're running off the generator or the camper's plugged in. Microwave isn't going to work. And a hood light fan here. Very easy to use. Cooktop, super simple. You turn it to light, twist your sparker, they light right up. All three burners work the same. Very easy to use. Alright. We'll come to the AC because we were just near that. So... If you're running it on the black, that's just going to be the fan for the AC. So. Right? If you're running out in the blue, that turns the AC portion on. And then you have the temperature settings here. And then off. Very simple to use. Okay. We'll make sure that gets turned back to normal. And it, they do, they, all the air comes out of here, but it is enough to cool this whole thing down efficiently. So don't worry about um, it not working right. Onto the similar HVAC system. Furnace. So all you do is move this over and it turns on. Now, if the gas is off, obviously this won't light. Um, so we'll turn it off now. So you, to turn it off, you go all the way over and then you have a little click. And then you all the way over. All right. Over here, you can turn on and off your water pump. You test the levels of your tanks. Water heater on and off right here. So on or off, it's strictly gas only. So turn it on. Once it's lit, that light will turn off. And the burner for the water heater will cycle on and off to help it keep its set, set temperature. You can start and stop your generator from here. You're gonna hold stop until that red light shows up. Then you're going to hit start. We're not going to start it now because obviously the plug isn't plugged in. And I don't like starting the generator while this camper is plugged in. So always plug in the uh, generator to the plug and then start your generator. Make sure your air conditioner is not running before you start your generator either. Fridge is very simple to use. So you have... Uh, someone must have unplugged us. That's why the... Yep. Hold on, I'm going to go make sure we get plugged back in because someone is messing with me. There we go. Ugh. There we go. Back to normal. So your fridge... Have the different treatment modes auto or gas and then on or off so that's on that's off i like leaving it off that way you guys don't um, 
get it in as out of propane because on auto it's going to default to 110. And if you were to get un unplugged anyway, anyhow, excuse me, if you were to get unplugged for any reason, this is going to automatically switch to running off of gas. That's why if I'm not going to use the, use my camper at home for a couple of weeks, I'll make sure I also turn the fridge off. Now, whether you're running your fridge on gas or electric, it does something here. It takes about six, anywhere from six to ten hours to get to operating temperature. So allow it to cool down at least six hours before you use it. Just the way the fridge operates. So if you can, plug it in the night before at home. Let it get cool at home. And then you can, you can um, unplug it. Either have it running on gas when you're going down the road. Or have your generator running when you're going down the road. To keep your free the food in your fridge cold if you wanted to store food in it while you were traveling. Bathroom, very simple. You have a vent here. You pull this down, lift up. There's another one of these style vents in that front bed above the cab. Although that one does not have a fan on it, this one does have a fan on it. Light switch in here. Toilet. Very simple. As long as you're pushing this pedal, it's gonna keep flushing. The nice thing about this toilet is it's porcelain too. So like, even the lid is nice, sturdy. So it's more like a traditional home toilet. It'll feel nicer. And then right here, it's a GFCI outlet. Any outlet that's a hook to a GFCI, this is the outlet you're gonna come hit reset on. Just like you want to home, you just push the button and to reset it. Light, uh, bathroom, bath, shower, whatever, oh, sorry. Shower in the bathroom area. Very simple, hot and cold, just turn it on, and then you have your shower head, which you can remove to get to the hard to reach spots. When you are traveling, though, with this, make sure you do retain this door so it doesn't fly open or whatnot. Bedroom's very simple, not a whole heck of a lot. Emergency exit, all you do is open these handles. And push the window if you needed to get out for an emergency. Otherwise, you can use it as a normal window. Light above the bed. So if you turn that on, and then you light switch from here. Oops, sorry, this is a light switch for the light in the bathroom. Oh, sorry, that's a light switch for a little step light. That light, although it's not bright now at night, comes in handy because there's a step down. And if you're tired and groggy, you're gonna forget. You know, step down and stumble. So that light definitely does help. And then the lights in here, you just turn on and off at the light itself. And then, underneath your bed, mattress is kind of heavy. You have access to this panel. It's going to have some screw holes in it you can take off. That's going to give you access to your drain for your fresh tank. To the valve for the drain so you can drain your fresh tank. And that's what that is. Alright. Well... That's pretty much it for your tour uh, of your majestic uh, of your majestic. I hope you found the video informative. I hope I didn't skip anything important. I know I didn't skip anything main. So let's, we can go around see if there's any few things we can look at. This outlet is neat. It has uh, two USB ports in it, which is nice. This is also a GSC GCI uh, outlet. Plus, nice. You could be sitting here when you're going on the road. The seat does have a seatbelt. Plug your phone in, charge your phone while you're going down the road and whatnot. And it's nice, you can you can run the generator going down the road. Generator does use power, not power, but the same gas that your onboard the chassis uses. So if the chassis is below a quarter of a tank, your generator won't, won't start. That's a safety feature, so if you're out camping, dry camping somewhere, you won't run yourself out of fuel. You have some more switches here. One on the left will do outside lights. See that one up here? One on the right does another step light down here, too. All right, well, that concludes the tour of the Majestic. Hope you folks enjoy using this trailer. Get a trailer, a camper. Hope you folks get a lot of good use out of it. And I hope you found the video informative. I try. Goodbye.